when you when you start having success in life uh in business mm -hmm. You know, it starts off, I'll be totally transparent uh, for me in the very beginning in my 20s. It was all about money. Sure. Uh, but that was very transactional. And But I learned as I matured in life that it was it actually what gave me fulfillment was more than money. I mean, money is very important. I want it all. But really, what really began fulfilling me as I grew uh, and uh, developed as a person uh, was helping other people. And when you see an impact in helping other people, that's where the real fulfillment for me and then you you get a greater purpose and uh yeah and when once you you get credibility and you learn how to do something and you can help other people do it it's really rewarding where well, our ongoing goal is to help our listeners unlock their fullest potential and live their best audacious lives ever. It's always a pleasure to have you here and I appreciate you taking time out of your day to join us. Now, just as a key unlocks a door to new opportunities, our conversation with Stephen Lago Marsano uh, will provide insights uh, with the tools to help you unlock your potential and step into the life that you've always dreamed of. Steven is a renowned motivational speaker and life coach dedicated to helping individuals tap into their inner greatness and achieve their goals. With years of experience in personal development, Steven has empowered countless individuals to make positive changes in their lives. Uh, Steven's experience and insights and unlocking potential make him a perfect guest for this episode. His unique perspective and practical advice will inspire and and motivate you to take bold steps towards living your most audacious life. So let's turn to our conversation with Stephen. Enjoy. Hey, Stephen, thank you for joining me here today on the Audacious Living Podcast. It's great to have you, man. Thanks for making the time like this. Uh, so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you know, I, I'm I'm always uh, you know thrilled at the opportunity to just engage in you know dialogues with individuals that, that that you know can get you know individuals to, to better places and help them on their own you know audacious path, if you will. Um, you know, it's 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 when we talk about so this you know the spirit of audacious, it's something that's available to each and every single one of us, and we just got to kind of make that step and, and continue on that journey to do you know to, to get to that better place, if you will. Um, what I love about the work that you do is you, you, you focus on helping entre entrepreneurs kind of get to that better place and, and, and certainly you empower them to sort of take hold of their future and, you know, set their goals and go after it and, and, and really elevate themselves and their businesses and obviously in their families and all the other ripple effects that come out of that. And so, uh, maybe as a starting point, uh, Stephen, I can get you to sort of fill our listeners in a little bit about the, the work that you do and, and what's got you to this point. Sure. Uh, Love to. Uh, and when I think of audacious, I think of big audacious goals. <laughs> That's the first thing that comes to my mind. Mm. Uh, and we need to, we all need to have more of them. Uh, so for me, uh, my experience, uh, entrepreneur, uh, president of TRC Electronics, uh, grew this business, have a great team, uh, really successful in that organization. And then over the past couple of years, I've converted a lot of my time uh, out of the business, uh, since I don't work in the business uh, nearly as much as I used to, uh, the business runs itself now with an amazing team. Uh, but uh, I've been taking uh, what I've learned and bringing it to other entrepreneurs, doing leadership coaching, running a leadership program, which is the Business Mastery Leadership Program with Cardone Ventures. That's Brandon Dawson and Grant Cardone's uh, company. And also um, doing business advising for uh, different business owners, because for me, you know, it's owning a business is is a challenge. Uh, Ninety seven percent of small businesses don't even last ten years, and if most of the entrepreneurs knew that before they started, they would probably have a different approach and make the right, proper investments. And helping guide those uh, entrepreneurs through all the challenges and, and giving them a better opportunity to succeed, because if they succeed. In their business, they're going to be able to positively impact the people that they bring in their organization and the clients that they're serving. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I think you're absolutely correct. Like it, it's a ripple effect, right? It just tr trickles all the way through. Yeah, and I think that when you when you start having success in life uh, in business, mm -hmm. you know, it starts off. I'll be totally transparent. Uh, for me, in the very beginning in my twenties, it was all about money. 
Sure. Uh, but that was very transactional. And, but I learned as I matured in life that it was it actually what gave me fulfillment was more than money. I mean, money is very important. I want it all. But really, what really began fulfilling me as I grew uh, and uh, developed as a person uh, was f- helping other people. And when you see an impact in helping other people, that's where the real fulfillment for me. And then you you get a greater purpose. And uh, yeah, when you, once you you get credibility and you learn how to do something, and you can help other people do it. It's really rewarding. When I'm I'm very very curious. At what point did you sort of uh, realize uh, uh, how? inspiring it is and fulfilling to help other people in your journey because like you said you got in you wanted to make money and that's what you're focused on you got an entrepreneurship but how long did it take you to realize that there's another layer or another level to this yeah so well the first step was making a lot of money and then realizing that okay it's just more money well that's great because it's a great great way to keep score but then then noticing in order to make money i was helping other people and i was uh getting more fulfilled by the reward of helping other people that was fulfilling me and making me happier than the money was. And I was like, wow, you know what? That's Who more interesting to me than just making money. Uh, that's, that's fulfilling me more. So that experience, it's like a transition that happens. Uh, but I was always like interested in leading people and helping yeah. other people. And so that kind of was there for me already, but it just really blew up for me. And now look at, if you want to be a leader, and you want to be a great leader, you've really got to be interested in helping other people and serving other people. If it's just self-serving and you're a business owner, which you're going to be a leader, if you're a business owner and entrepreneur, yeah. you're self-serving, you're not going to be successful because you're going to be selfish and you're any end of the day, you're going to be less successful if you put other people first. Got you. Got you. No, you're absolutely correct. I'm with you on that wholeheartedly. Um, let's, let's, let's kind of go back. Was entrepreneurship the thing that you always want to do growing up as a young little Steven going, Hey, I want to do something bigger the world. I know it's an entrepreneurship. Yeah, it was. Wow. Uh, and the re- reason for that is because I grew up in an entrepreneurial family. My grandfather, well, one of my grandfathers owned a uh, custom kitchen cabinet uh, manufacturing company. He manufactured kiss, uh, kitchen cabinets and then uh, he retired and then uh, went in business with my dad, started a business for my dad. So since I, we were around the kitchen table, it was always about business and our business and being a business owner. So I always knew like, hey, I'm going to I'm going to be a leader. I want to run a business. Uh, did it, and even then, you know, I'm like 14 years old and they're sitting around. Hey, you're going to take over the family business one day and run a business like it was kind of just ingrained in me. It's interesting how that works, right? Like at, at a young age, you like you know what you want, and obviously the influences around you. In your case, your grandfather and your father. But I'm just always fascinated uh, uh, how influential uh, these circumstances can be on our lives, and how we end up living our lives as a result of it. It's incredible. Yeah, right. Because um, you know, you, you think about like generations and how they they sure. pass and the influence that they have, and what and, and I'm very like intentional about this because. What they did for me was they uh, they passed a couple of things. Number one, my both my grand, all my family, they passed generational work ethic to me that was incredible. And I think this is so important to to, to be able to pass work amazing work ethic to your children. Mm. Like that was one of the most valuable things they did because my work ethic is incredible, and I get it from them. Uh, and I'm doing the same thing with my children. And then secondly. It wasn't like, hey, you just wasn't thinking in a box. It wasn't like, oh, hey, you're just going to have this normal corporate job and you're going to just follow the corporate ladder, like yeah. be creative and like, hey, take ri- it was risk taking. Yep. Like if you're an entrepreneur, you're not going to take the normal route. And a lot of people are going to under are gonna, you're going to be misunderstood. You're going to be like, oh, this guy's crazy. Like, what is he doing? Like, you're going to get second guessed by everyone that's not an entrepreneur all the time. Uh, family members included that are not <laughs> to go get it. Uh, you're not off limits, anybody. Yeah, you're not. And that's part of it. But so they gave me this like a, this freedom to really think that way and not to think inside of a box where I'm just going to get a job and I'm just going to go like down the ladder. And look, that's there's nothing wrong with that because you have to have a certain you have to have the DNA to be an entrepreneur. And sure. m- uh, most people do not have it. And that is not the right path for uh, most people. A lot of people think, oh, you know, being an entrepreneur is so cool. Look, 
you got to have it. You have to have so much resilience. You've got to have an appetite for like torture at times because it's going to be, uh, there's, there's just so much about you that you, that you has to be ingrained in you in order to be a really successful entrepreneur. And most people don't have that. I, I would say a really important, um, our, our key element is be able to have perspective. Uh, as, as an entrepreneur. So recognizing that it's not just not just for the moment, that perspective of the wide view uh, to understand things like business cycles, as an example, right? That's, I think that's a, when you get to understand perspective. So being able to recognize, okay, so what's happening now? So my business is doing really, really, really well for the moment. That's not necessarily going to be that way all the time because of IE business cycles. But yeah. at the same time, uh, you know, the reverse side of the you know, token is, Things are or things are down now, but I'm tr you know based on what I see from a larger view. Here's what I'm expecting down the road. Yeah, so it's a great point. It's big picture, like being able to zoom out and see the big picture, and that starts with having a vision. So, like entrepreneurs have to be visionaries. They have to be able to have a big vision of like what the future looks like. Right. Uh, they have to have a lot of creativity, confidence, because it's got to be really big so that you have a big why, uh, and then uh, being able to zoom out in the moment. Because yeah, I've been doing this for uh, for a number of years now. So I've been since 1998. Yep. And I've been through many business cycles where it really sucked. And it was really awesome. But you know, right. it's just a cycle and be able to zoom out like, hey, what's going on right now? What's the big picture? Uh, you, you talked about uh, uh, sort of you know, breaking down the barriers, if you will, as an entrepreneur and being able to um, Look, you know, not just again. For you gave the example of not just being in a corporate job, but you know, breaking down barriers in terms of other possibilities. I think you broke down in, in, a, in a really different way because you didn't stay with the family business. You went to electronics. Okay, so the uh, good good point. So when in 1998, I came yeah. into my dad's business and yeah. my grandfather okay. owned a business, right? Okay. Electronics, and um, so after uh, maybe 13 years ago, I ended up buying the business from my. I bought the business. I bought my grandfather out. Okay. Uh, the business. And when I approached them, I said, Hey, look, I want some ownership in a business. I'd like to buy your grandpa. You get you're getting older. I'd like to buy your uh, shares of the business. And he says, why don't I just give it to you? And I said, cause grandpa, I don't want anyone giving me anything. I want to buy it for what it's worth. And he says, right. okay, good. So I bought, like, we got a, a valuation on the company. We got it appraised and Hey, I bought him out. Then a uh, couple years, a few years later, I was having issues with my dad. I said, dad, either I go or you go. Like, uh, I'm willing to buy the business from you. Was not an easy conversation. But then I ended up buying him out as well. Got it appraised, same thing. Bought it full value, what it was worth at the time. Right. Probably overpaid for it. But I, but it was good. I gave him, it, this is in the family. So I felt good about it. Mm -hmm. Right thing. And uh, And now I still own that business. And, but now I'm not working in the business like the way I used to, because now I owned a job at the time, not a business, because I, I was a revolving door. Everybody needed me in order for the sure. business to operate. And now I'm able to take that, what I've learned and move that. And I can help other family. So many businesses are family businesses, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a challenge. And I had great experience and was able to successfully transfer from one generation to the next. And I have other family members right now presently working in my business. And if you didn't know they were family members, if I didn't tell you, you wouldn't know it. Wow. Wow. That's the, I would, I would, and I'm surprised I would gather that's not the norm. Like, that no. family business it's 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 especially got multi-generations um it can actually be kind of messy at times i'd imagine yeah you just don't you you don't treat anyone different so mm. nobody when you have a business you don't give anyone special treatment whether it's your right. wife whether it's uh somebody that's super talented no matter what it is don't give anybody special treatment you've got to have standards you have to have policies you've got to have procedures you've got to have uh metrics everybody is but to be honest with you if you're a family member it's a little harder because you got to overcome the uh, misconception of nepotism so like you got to really overperform so i knew that when i came in and worked for my dad and the family members that work here i said look you're going to need to be a top performer yeah. otherwise everyone's going to think that you've got there's nepotism in their favor so you have sure. to limit any doubt and, and and how big is the company? Because when in a larger company where they say there's you know more non-family than family, it becomes even more important that that, that you know there's a clear line and there's no confusion or blurred. 
Yeah, we have 45 people right now yeah. and yeah. have um, a brother, a sister, and a niece working in the business. So gotcha. there's three, uh, including me, there's four family members in the business. Got you, got you. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. Um, let, let's kind of jump into the work that you're doing with uh, leaders and entrepreneurs yes. now. Uh, I would imagine that, that that you know people come to you in their business at different states, or or maybe you find them somehow. Um, mm -hmm. or, or or maybe maybe you can explain how that connection is made. Yeah, sure. Well, first, um, it all started with me working uh, with Cardon Ventures, uh, where I'm leading uh, their business mastery leadership program. So we've got over 300 uh, people in that program. Uh, it's an elite leadership program. It's 81 weeks of online training and courses uh, with weekly uh, with weekly calls that we uh, I lead the coaching calls uh, once a week for an hour, and then we have three weekend retreats. Now. Uh, People can find that because they through their work with Cardone Ventures or their, their association with me, and we get them in that program. That program is incredible. Yep. Um, now that particular program, we're just working with whether the business owners they could be a million dollar business or they could be a hundred million dollar business from revenue or higher, and their leaders that they elect to uh, invest and put in that program. And we're just going to guide them through all the basic leadership principles and concepts that will help them succeed. And, you know, it's so interesting when you invest in yourself in leadership, yeah. you know, initially everyone's doing it for professional development, but then it ends up helping them personally more than it helps them professionally because right. we're, you know, if you're a leader, you don't stop leading when you walk out the door of your, your office. No. You, no, you, know, you know that, you know that. <laughs> yeah. So you're leading your community, you're leading your family, sure. leading your sure. friends. Yeah, no, it does. It. It's, 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 yeah, I mean, you gotta be very clear and, and, and maybe, uh, you know, there's a nice segue into the importance of work-life balance because, you know, as, as it, 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 it's, it, it can take you over and take your life over if, if, if you're not careful. Right. Yeah. So I don't believe in work-life balance. Okay. So I'm going to give you an alternative view about it. It's a work-life alignment. Okay. So like, uh, oddly, are you married? No. Okay. So if you're in a relationship, is it is your relationship work to make it successful? Yeah, it's it's work. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Is it work to be healthy? Yeah, it's work too. Yeah, nothing comes easy. Work, is, is it work to be happy? Yeah, work absolutely. Well, that's so life. Right? Everything's work. Where's your balance? Right. It's all work. So the thing is, you just have to align the work with the life you want. So what you what you want to be healthy, you got to work at it. If you want, you want a great relationship with your, you know, your, with whoever you're in a relationship with, you got to work at it. So if, so this is how you do it as a leader, because everyone, look, don't get me wrong. Like we've got to have, we want to align our life with the work we do with our life. So if you right. want a life where like, Hey, I don't want to make a lot of money. I just want a lot of free time. Well, then I should work a 40 hour week or, or a 35 hour week. Okay. That, and that's, that's great if that's what you want, but you just yes. got to know, know what you want and know, know how you got to get it. Okay. Yep. Yep. But if you want to be a millionaire, if you want to be a mul well, first of all, a million dollars is nothing these days. If you want to be a multimillionaire or you want to make a difference in this world you, and you're like, Hey, I just want to work 40 hours. That's not aligning the work with the life you want. If you want to like, if you want to pay for your children's tuition, you want to set them up you want to transfer amazing work ethic to your children so that they know what it takes to work hard and to get an amazing life. That's not a 40 hour week. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. And if you think it is, you're mistaken and you're going to fail. So, but for me, like what I do as a leader is, Hey, what, what do you want to accomplish in life? What are your goals? And now so let's align the work with the goals. But before we go even further, what is the importance of these goals? What, what's the purpose of these goals? Why do you want to accomplish that goal? Because you got to get in touch with the why. Because if I, if I have a goal and I'm not in touch with the why of the goal, then I'm there. I'm really unlikely to accomplish it because I'm not going to, when the tough gets tough, I'm not going to be able to uh, stay there and persevere. And gotcha. uh, yeah. so, so, that, so for me, I never think because there's so many times I'm like, I don't know if I'm working or if I'm just having fun. I can't, I can't, the lines are so blurred. So when I'm coaching a uh, a business owner last night at 8 30 to 9 30 at night, mm -hmm. I'm having so much fun. Mm -hmm. And am I working or am I just like I'm I'm helping this guy yes. help grow his business and create better opportunities for the people that work in his business and the future people that are going to come work in his business. I, yeah. Is it really work? 
Right. Because, right. because they fulfill my purpose of helping other people. But also now my daughters are, hey, dad's going on a coaching call and he's going to be helping another business owner improve his business. Yeah, yeah. And also dad's dad's making $5,000 a month from coaching this particular business owner. And that $5,000 a month is going to our, our house fund where our family has a goal to buy a particular house. And we have the whole plan mapped out and we know we've got to align the work we do with yeah. that particular goal. Yeah. So now we're talking about it as a family and there's no talk of work-life balance in my right, house. Right, right. I mean, not because we're out of balance. We want to be out of balance. We want to be like trying to do things and move and shake and like have an amazing life and excitement. We don't want it to, when, if I come in my house, I'm like, oh guys, so much balance in our life is probably pretty fucking boring right now. That's just <laughs> the bottom line. Like I want it, like I want it rocking and rolling. Like we're right. just things and like shit man we're growing this is uncomfortable yes. it's challenging that's friggin life i got one life to live here yes. and when i hey when i'm on my deathbed i don't want to be like thank god i had so much balance <laughs> because man yeah. i'm all I, balanced I would have life regretted is good. if i didn't have balance yeah. i want to look like big shit man i really friggin went for it man yeah. and you know you know what? What I just transferred to my children and yeah. their children is amazing because I inspired the shit out of them and showed them what's yes. possible in life. Yeah. See, I, I I love it because you know you're really underscoring just the importance of you know I mean I think mean, I think alignment's a beautiful word, right? Aligning the things that you love that drive you that you get excitement from with the help with the things that help you meet your goals. And, yeah. and, and and the reality is, you know, when you find that thing that you love and you enjoy doing, you've got unlimited energy for that. You you have all the time in the world for that. You know, it's almost like you don't get tired and you can do it all day and feel good about it. And 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 that, that kind of alignment, that's a really special thing, man. Yeah. And you know, it's and I say you don't have to love what you do. You have mm -hmm. to love what why you're doing it. Yeah. So like Point. what because there's things I do. I'm like, I don't love doing this, but I love why I'm doing it. And I'm going to freaking do it like crazy. So, because it's got to serve your purpose, you got to get in touch with your why. And like, what do you want? What do you want life? And why do you want it? And some, you're going to do a lot of work that you don't like to do, but you're, it serves a great, greater purpose. Like, Hey, you talked about big picture earlier. You got to be able to zoom out in your life. Like what's the big picture? Like, Hey, you, like if you're a business owner, you got to slow down in the economy. Well, in your personal life, like, hey, you know what? We're going to go through this transition where, you know, I, I'm going to be doing things I don't really want to do. I'm going to have to, like, get stricter with my diet to get in better shape. And it's not really, like, ideal because I'm not going to be able to drink that extra beer on the weekend or whatever it is or yep. eat that, like, dessert I like to have when I go to a restaurant. But the bigger picture is this, and I'm going to zoom out. So that's, that. you know, that's just really important is being able to, like, I what do I want to accomplish? What's my why in life? Got you. Yeah, why is also important. I'm glad that uh, you, you focus on that. Um, I'm curious. Can I just talk about something where you said? Sure. Right so, you know, and where this really comes from is, look, we're all programmed for the middle class in our country. Okay. It's like, hey, you want work-life balance. You want to be comfortable. You Okay, when you graduate high school, you need to go to college. You need to take a college loan. Hey, and then don't worry about it because maybe we're going to forgive your college debt. And then when you uh, start working, work-life balance, 40 hours a week, no more. Hey, but hey, in some states, we want to make it like 30. Uh, we want to change it to 32 hours because you know what? It's too, it's too much. Then you need to go uh, invest your all the money, extra money you make in your retirement account. And then when you, as soon as you retire, because you're going to hate the work you do so much, you can retire and then you could start living. <laughs> Yeah, so, wait to get there. <laughs> but an entrepreneur, like, see, this is where entrepreneurs are like, fuck that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Break the <laughs> like, down. Yeah, we don't like, but that's where, but we, because we don't, we don't subscribe to that. Think about this. The goal is for you to be in the middle class. Why would the goal to be in the middle class? Why wouldn't the goal to be like, like a, a multimillionaire and to be in the right. 1%. Why wouldn't we have everyone strive to be up? Because we want to stick you there. So you're dependent on it. Right. And do you think that anybody that's a politician, that's really super successful, that's trying to get a 32 hour work week, ever worked 32 hours in their week, in their life? No way. 
Right. They busted their ass. They're out there all the time busting their ass. And the irony is they didn't subscribe to any of that crap that they're trying to shove down your throat. Oh, no. And, ch and chances are they weren't raised with that either. Like so you talked about being an entrepreneurial household. Chances are they weren't raised with that mentality to strive for the middle class. Um, no. And that's why it's not even a, it's probably a foreign concept. Like, what are you talking about? Like, this is where no, I, I want to be. Yeah, they'll make like $80,000 a year as a politician, but they're multimillionaires. <laughs> that's right. That's right. How that's that right. happened. That's right. Yeah, no, yeah, I got you. No, absolutely, absolutely. I think I think it's a, it's a, a, it's a sort of fascinating conversation because really it forces people to sort of break down their and, and, and look at and evaluate their belief system and think that they believed uh, are, are, were important or believed should have been the norm and, and really look at that and go, well, why do I think that way? Why do I believe that way? Why am I only striving for here as opposed to up here? And so that well, that's, I think it's a really valuable exercise to go through. Yeah, you know what it is? It's teaching people how to think, not what to think. There's gotcha. a big difference. So when you're leading somebody, you don't teach them what to think. You just teach them how to think. Mm -hmm. So, and maybe like, hey, I thought about it and I learned how to think. And that's what I, that's, I decided for myself. That's what I really want. Okay, great. That's awesome. Then go for it. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's a lot more powerful than like, you just been programmed what to think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is, is, is that whole thinking uh, exercise something that you do with your entrepreneurs? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Or like, well, let's just break it down to leadership. So it's uh, so, for instance, uh, problem solving. So if someone has a problem, the uh, the old me before I learned how to become a better leader was well, give them the solution. So that's teaching them what to think mm -hmm. versus, hey, we've got a problem, which is really an opportunity or just a situation. Like, let's uh, identify what the real cause is. And now let's identify, uh, hey, bring me three solutions. So I don't want someone bringing me a problem. I want someone bringing me a problem with solutions because now I'm there. And then, hey, what's your thought process through that? I like that one the best. Help me think, what, how'd you come up with that? And then walk me through the process. Or maybe like they did their solutions are not that great. And I'll train the thinking, not train the, the actual solution in itself. Mm -hmm. Same thing with business owners. So business owners and coaching they come to me with a situation like I don't even I don't view anything as a problem. It's all opportunities and situations. Right. right. Well, right. let's what's the cause? Like, hey, let's think through what really caused that. Like, get to the root cause, and what are some solutions that you could come up with that'll solve that particular situation, the cause of the situation, so that we're not just slapping a band aid on it and we're talking about the same yeah. thing months later. I, I I love the fact that you refer to those opportunities, right? Problems, because oftentimes, you know, our, our our viewpoint and how we see things really influence how we attack them or how we deal with them. And if you yeah. see something as, hey, this is an opportunity for us to try this or to go here or to experiment with that, then it's not a problem. It's a pathway to something new. That's right. Every problem is just an opportunity in disguise. And uh you know, you have a choice, and it's interesting because we'll, sometimes we'll like look at it as a problem, and oh my god, we go into like total. Uh, we're out of reality mm -hmm. with like, this total negative possible situation where like that's really probably never going to happen. Right. Well, why don't you just choose to go in this total opposite end that's positive that is so out of reality? You have you, they're both out of reality. They're both unrealistic. Why would you choose the negative one? Find the positive one. The point is here. Like you have a choice to of how you view things in life. Yes. You can view things something as a problem or an opportunity. It's like there's always the 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 competing uh thought, competing like situation or opposite of it. Mm -hmm. You have a negative thought, give yourself a competing positive thought, like right away. Oh shit! Like oh, this is so bad today. All right, I had that thought. I can't kill it. I'm a competing thought is, wow, it's a great opportunity for us to get better as a company right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and that's a whole mindset shift, right? Like, in sort of instead of seeing it this way, I now see it that way. Or yeah. it, it was a problem, but now it's an opportunity. And and I and I do love the fact that you ask, you have people bring you, you know, like say three different options. Um, actually, I really think that's a really good empowerment exercise because you're giving them the power to kind of come to their own conclusions. Obviously, you're you're guiding them and you're giving some advice and suggestions or pointing out some things that may they might be blind spots, right? But overall. If you're if you're if you're presenting, here are three things that I've come up with. You've already more than halfway solved the problem because at least now you're thinking of it, right? You're thinking about how to approach it as opposed to, oh, this is a problem. What am I going to do? <laughs> right. Yeah, and the key words empowering. So when you're leading people, you need to empower them, 
and they're capable of so much more than they even realize. And as right. a leader, you need to be able to see that in people. Like you, a lot, so, so many leaders struggle with only seeing all the flaws in the people they lead, and they just talk about everything that's wrong with them. Yeah, you got to be able to see uh, you. So, as an entrepreneur, you're a visionary. You see the big picture and the great possibilities for your business. As a leader, you've got to see the big picture and the great possibilities for all the people that you lead, and you got to believe in them and prove yeah. to them and demonstrate to them that you believe in them. Mm -hmm. You do that by empowering them. Yeah, yeah, and, and I mean, what that does for their potential uh, is just mind blowing. Because you know, listen, if you give someone the belief or or instill that belief in them. Uh, the things that they can like they step back, get out of the way. Cause that, you know, you just created a powerhouse and the thing that they're about to do is just, you know, phenomenal. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. And they, uh, and, and you, and before you know, it, you're like, Hey, you know, the answer all the time. Why are you coming to me with this? <laughs> it's like, maybe it's time to enter a coaching relationship because you don't need me anymore. Right. That kind of a thing, which ultimately is a place to be, get to that's kind of would be the goal I would imagine. Right. Yeah. Although like everyone needs coaching. So, but you just sure. meet like, Hey, you move beyond me, you know, possibly, or like, Hey, we're on to bigger and better things. But one thing I would say is that everybody needs to find somebody that's developing them and meant everyone needs a mentor. Everyone needs a coach, no matter who you are, what, you know, what level you're at. I, I have, you know, I know billionaires that are getting coached. Uh, like everyone that's super successful there maybe the type of coach changes because now it's I'm moving on to a different part of life that I need to develop, you know? I, I know you talked earlier uh, about, um, you know, you know, buying your father, the company and you should talk about, you know, buying your father, your grandfather's shares at one point. Yeah. Um, I wonder, I wonder, and, and sorry, I, th I think you said you sort of mentioned some challenges or some struggles that you're having on, mm -hmm. I want, with your father at that time and why you did that. Um, if you just sort of talk about maybe some of the challenges in the business that you run into or things that you had to overcome or encounter, because I think sometimes we oftentimes, so what, so I'm on my journey, on my pathway, and I don't think anyone understands the problem that I'm going through. No one on the planet, Stephen's got any idea. The thing that I'm doing going is unique to me and me alone, and no one's ever experienced it. But oftentimes, as we know, you know, there's nothing new under the sun, so to speak. And chances are what you're going through, someone's not only gone through that, they've solved it three and four times over. So I wonder if you sort of talk about some of the things that you experienced that can maybe inspire listeners a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so a lot, what you just said, a lot of business owners feel that way about their problems. This is just uh, my business. You don't understand my business. You, you don't, the, I don't, I'm just dealing with these problems. We, there, these problems are very generic across yeah. the board and we all deal with them and we all have them. I could give you a couple of examples, a couple of examples of problems that I've, uh, that I've encountered was, all right, when, when there's downturns in the economy, you don't get the growth that you want. And then you start fearing like, well, okay, what the, what's going on here? Like, are we going to, we're going to survive this? Is this, uh, is this my company's performance right now? Is this a reflection of the, the, the market right now? Like what is going on? Do is it me, or is it just is? Am I doing something wrong? Did I stop right. knowing how to do this? So and you start having all these doubts, and you have to figure this out. Uh, and then you realize, okay, let me do peer to peer comparisons of in the industry. Okay, they're doing similar to me right now. Okay, it's not me now. Okay, but uh, the last time I checked was a month ago. I got checked again. So. Now, like that's something that happens for in business cycles for businesses, like how they handle uh, downturns and how they handle the the upturns too. Losing people, I used to, I used to say I lost people. Right? Well, okay, we're okay. We've got people, and and they someone quit, and I viewed them as a loss. Yeah. Now, okay, is it that's a problem now? Oh, hey, everyone's every every business owner deals with losing an employee. Now we're transitioned that I don't look at it any, I don't, I never lose an employee anymore. Employees exit the organization either voluntarily or involuntarily. And we just bring in new employees. Like if it's no longer a fit for a person, Hey, no problem. Like, I understand, like I wish them the best of luck moving forward. I hope they do great. Yep. You create a system and a process. There's so many amazing people out there in this world. And you bring a system and a process where you bring in the next great person. And the interesting thing is, as that happens and you go through that cycle, you learn, you have a better idea of what is needed in that role, what's a better fit in that role, and you get better at bringing in people in over time. So that's a, that's something that just goes, every business owner goes through that. 
mm. being key man dependent where, oh boy, if I lose this particular employee, like I'm in trouble in, this, in, in my business. Okay, well, a lot of business owners have that person. Like I got to give them special treatment because if I lose them, well, right, they're a right, salesperson, right. whatever. But then you learn how to uh, not be key man dependent and, and you learn how to have more of a process. And well, if someone's, uh, you know, a problem and they're not a culture fit and they're, they're peeing in the pool <laughs> and, uh, and, and, no, and no one knows it. And, and here we are, uh, they, while they're doing well in sales, they're causing all these other problems. Like, yeah, it's better they're gone because they're really not helping in the big right. picture. Right, 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 right. I, lo I love the fact that you referenced culture uh, and, and how important that is. So when you bring in these new individuals, yeah. uh, and they've got to be a uh, right fit for your culture as well, too. So I think that's an important part of that, of that selection Very. process. But when mm -hmm. you bring that person in, uh, it, it should be almost automated, but very close to that, where they can come in, assimilate, understand where they, where they fit, get, you know, be clear on what their role is and then proceed forward. And I think a supportive culture helps do that. Yeah. So when we, uh, in our interview process, and this is what I coach and, and teach, uh, one of our steps in our uh, interview process is a core value presentation where they yeah. just give a seven minute presentation on our seven core values, uh, how they demonstrated that they've been aligned with it in their life. They understand them and how they'll demonstrate them if they join our organization. And then when we onboard an employee, we're aligning them culturally, financially, and operationally. And then they get aligned really quickly in the first 30 days and are ready to roll. But we have a lot of confidence when we bring a team member in that if they're in a culture, they're a culture fit because they are aligned with our core values. Gotcha. Yeah. Big one. That's a big one. Um, so the la last point I want to touch on um is 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 growth and maybe innovation ties in that as well too um because businesses and again you know i that'd be a, a a road that sort of all leaders have to face at some point in time is when do you grow right or when do you scale up um uh, um, uh, being able to take on whether it's new technologies or new processes or or new procedures are, are all part of that so that innovation and growth and expansion mm -hmm. um are there sort of general rules of thumb or things to bear in mind when you're kind of at that crossroad and you're thinking about what the next level looks like for you? Yeah. So you should always be thinking about the next level. You're either growing or you're dying in a business. So you should always be in growth mode, but you, you're going to go through different breakpoints through growth okay. so you have to understand the different stages of what you need to establish in your business so that you can, uh, so that you're capable of growing and grow and having sustainable growth. Because if you don't create the foundation in the beginning and then and then layer that with what you need to layer as, as time goes on and as you grow your business, you're not going to be able to sustain it. You're going to snap back. Uh, so you're always you, you've got to be thinking like uh, growth targets all the time, but you've got to understand and learn. And most business owners don't understand this because they're not educated on it. You got to find the resources so that you can get educated. And that's something that we do. I'm teaching you on like what you need to do at the level you're at in order to be able to get at the next couple levels and break through the different break points. Got you. Got you. And uh, so I like the idea of always being right, like always in growth mode and um, yeah. looking beyond not just, yeah. So not like, Hey, we're having a great day today. Like, okay, so you're having a great day today. What does tomorrow and the day after potentially look like? And how can you extend those great days? Right. That's right. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. One day is tomorrow. Yesterday is doesn't tomorrow is a new day. It starts all over. It didn't matter what happened yesterday. You can't like, you know, right. people like lean on past results. Like you look, Hey, that was the past. Like, what are you doing today? You know, you yeah. got to keep growing. That's funny. I have, um, I have what's what I, what I call the, a bold framework and it's, 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 it's a framework, bold B O L D uh, where it encourages individuals to, you know, on the path to living your best audacious life, you've got to be bold. And yes. the, 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 the B, the B in that framework stands for better than yesterday. Right. Yes. So it's fantastic that you climbed that mountain yesterday. You got to the peak, but that peak of yesterday's mountain is the bottom of a new one. Right. And so now you start that climb again. Um, I, I always, you know, make the joke. Yeah, that's great that when you're in grade five, you won your, your little league championship. But as an adult, it's not going to help you today. Right. So I, but but at the same time, right, but in fairness, you know, we absolutely want to celebrate our successes. We absolutely want to take joy in our accomplishments. We absolutely want to give ourselves credit for the work that we've done to get the things that we've gotten. 
but there's a time and place for that. And that there's a point where you celebrate your party. Fantastic. Now you move forward. And then, so it ties into your growth mode. And so um, that's a way of being more, more bold and audacious. I love it. Yeah. And it, it's uh, you definitely celebrate the wins. You've got to celebrate the yep. wins. Be, yep. Even small wins, you got to celebrate because when you're not getting a big wins, you got to focus on the little things. And, you know, we do that all the time here in my yep. organization. Um, I, it. I, I spoke to someone yesterday. You know what he said to, uh, to your point? It's, I'm better than I was yesterday, but not as good as I'm going to be tomorrow. Love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. In, in fairness, to give you the rest of that framework, the O stands for outlast adversity. We know that, uh, you know, we, we know trouble's going to come, whether it's a business world or personal life, outlast adversity. L, live your truth. You want to be authentic as who we are as possible. And then dis and D is for disrupt the norm. You got to be a trailblazer. Got to do something that else people aren't doing, right? And so that's my, that, that, that's a bold framework for living your best audacious life. Uh, uh, Stephen, I'd be remiss if I didn't give you an opportunity as a fellow podcaster for you to pl pl plug uh, your own podcast. Oh, I appreciate that. So uh, my podcast is Steve Lags Unfiltered. You can find me on YouTube, Spotify, every single you know major audio platform. And uh, if you're looking for any business coaching, you can uh, email me, Steve, at stevelags.com. And I'm on Instagram at stevealags.com. Uh, excuse me, at stevealags. There you go. There you go. I would be remiss if I didn't ask you one final question, Stephen, and and um, and and it should be a really so easy one for you. I want you simply just to fill in the blank, right? Okay, go and, for it. And my question is, uh, uh, entrepreneurship means what? Entrepreneur entrepreneurship means creating huge impact. Yes. I love, it. I love it. I love it. See, this has been awesome, man. Thank you so much for this. I uh, appreciate your sharing, appreciate the insights and congratulations on the great work you're doing. Uh, I really mean that because when you can inspire others in, in the ways that you are and motivate them, but more importantly, empower them, which is what we talked about earlier. Uh, you're doing some great things, not for just themselves, uh, generationally for their families and their families' families. And so uh, congratulations, all the best and uh, keep up the great work, my friend. Thanks for having me. I loved, uh, love the time here. Awesome. Hey folks, we're back here on the Audacious Living Podcast. And, you know, in our conversation with Stephen, we learned that unlocking our potential begins with believing in yourself and taking intentional actions towards your goals by embracing change, facing challenges head on, and cultivating a growth mindset. You can unleash your inner greatness and create the life you truly, truly desire. For more guidance and support in unlocking your potential, I encourage you to connect with Stephen directly. You can find his contact details in the show notes below and reach out to him uh, for personalized coaching uh, and me me uh, mentorship as well. He offers that. Um, he, there's actually, he made mention of a, a special package of personalized coaching sessions for pro podcast listeners. So certainly take advantage of this opportunity and give you a chance to work closely with Stephen and accelerate your own journey towards audacious living. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Audacious Living Podcast. If you've found this episode inspiring and valuable, please like, follow, and share to help our podcast grow. Together, we can continue to empower and uplift each other towards living our most audacious lives ever. Until next time, stay safe, be kind, show love to one another, and be audacious. <laughs>